Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 g'day, curd nerds. Welcome, one and all. Uh, this is Ask the Cheese Man, episode 182, and uh, thank you so much for joining to me today. We've got quite a few people in the chat as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Lovely to see you all. Okay, um, just the normal formalities at the start of the show. We've got a shout out to Harley and Caden. Thank you very much for your YouTube membership, Harley and Caden. Uh, and uh, we have no new patrons this week, but thank you to all the financial members, uh, both on YouTube memberships and on Patreon, uh, for supporting the show. Uh, without it, Kim and I couldn't bring it to you, well, most weeks anyway. All righty. Um, so if you've got any questions now, is the time to ask, um, and that's okay. Uh, so just ask away in the chat, and I'll be able to display them on the screen when we get there. Um, but big announcements. Uh, the biggest announcement I've got is that I had a thought in the middle of the night, as you do. And next week, next Sunday, my time, an hour earlier than now, uh, will be 12 hours of cheese. I was going to do 24 hours, uh, but then I looked up the YouTube limitations for live streams and uh, it will only archive 12 hours of live stream so i've cut that down originally it was going to be 24 hours of cheese but now it's going to be 12 hours of cheese live stream there will be some pre-recorded segments because i don't know if i'll be able to stay awake or not have a hoarse voice after talking for 12 hours um but let me just show you the schedule that i've come up with uh, for the 12 hours of cheese making. Let me, can I share my screen? Share, share, share. Here we are. Share the window. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. So the first one will be, uh, the first session will be an intro. Uh, then we'll have a beginner's cheese session, which is about equipment, paneer and halloumi. Uh, then we'll have a live interview with uh, Shay Fred. Uh, who runs a cheese-making YouTube channel uh, somewhere in uh, French Canada. So, And he's got a, quite a following, so that should be good fun. Uh, he, his, his channel is primarily in, primarily in French, but he speaks English, so that'll be good. Um, then we've got a second uh, beginner session, Bel Panol, Feta, Kefili, and How to Clean Your Cheesecloth. Then at uh, 10 o'clock, we've got a live uh, Ask the Cheese Man. Uh, then we've got another session, uh, Beginner's Cheese Making, uh, where we go through um, uh, Bel Paese explaining my cheese making course. Uh, and then um, uh, Cheese Baskets, The Best Milk, and Queso Fresco. Then we've got a live session for 30 minutes um, about uh, we're going to be doing some live taste tests. Uh, what's in my cheese fridge and we've got some old ones in there so that should be interesting then we got the first 30 minute intermediate session which is about how to make a good brine uh, and jalapeno cheddar then we've got our live interview with i don't know who yet um so that should be good fun um, i'm just uh, got to send out a few more emails today Okay, um, and then the next session is uh, an intermediate session Yarlsberg and Gouda uh, then we've got another live Q&A. Then we've got a, uh, a mould ripened cheese session, Petite Blue, Fake Camembert and How to Heat Your Milk uh, using the sous vide. Then we've got another live interview with who we don't know who yet. So that, I'll lock that in soon. Uh, then we've got a washed rind cheese session with Tilsa and Limburger. And then we've got a live wrap up, 30 minutes at the end, to finish off the 12-hour block. So that should be very exciting. I'm certainly very excited. Uh, should be good fun. A 12 hour marathon. Um, now we will, uh, I've got to work out the technicalities and stuff yet. Uh, I have been playing around, um, to make it all work. 
uh, and setting up the services and, and all that sort of stuff. So technically it's doable. Um, definitely there will be two cameras. There'll be the normal, well, I won't be in this studio. I'll be in my other studio, the, the, the one we made. Um, so we'll be doing a lot of the interviews and stuff from my desk in there. And then at the stand-up table in the middle of the room where we normally do the some of the cheese presentations now, that's where we'll be doing the live taste test and the wrap-up. So great fun. Um, I will be promoting, flogging that as a promotion during the week. So if you see it around, um, lock in the reminder, it will be on... Um, it will be on Facebook and YouTube. So the Facebook page is Cheese Man TV. That's where you can go to see the Facebook version, exactly the same as the YouTube version. Um, so the chat I'll be monitoring uh, via the software so I can see both Facebook and YouTube comments. So that should be good fun. So there will be uh, lots and lots of content. Now, that's only the first thing, first announcement. Second announcement is today, straight after the live stream, uh, we will be having uh, a premiere. Uh, so those who don't know what a YouTube premiere is, over on the YouTube channel, there will be a Petite Chili Brie Taste Test. Yes, they were ready and absolutely fantastic. So the uh, the looks on my face when <laughs> I eat it is, uh, is quite good. It, that's worth going over to see. It's only a quick... Uh, a 14 and a half minute video and you should be if you're watching this stream right now alive you should be redirected to the premiere and given a choice whether to go there or not at the end of the show so that should be good fun now also i've been very busy in the kitchen so um i've made a cheese i don't know if it's a disaster or not we will find out uh i don't want people making this one just yet until it's fully mature uh, it's called Sal Giorgi, which is a Portuguese, it's from the Azores, or Portuguese, which is Portuguese, I think. Um, so it's a, it's like a cheddar, but a bit moister, apparently. I can't see how, but yeah, it's, apparently it will be. Um, in the kitchen right now, I've got a white Stilton with apricots. Um, so that should be good. So that a white Stilton is basically a Stilton cheese. Uh, that doesn't have the Penicillium uh, Rock 40 uh, mould put into it. So it'll be a virgin Stilton, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's with apricots, so that should be good. I also started using some truffles that were lovely sent to me um, uh, from a company in Tasmania, and more about that later. But uh, I've made a cheese called Truffle Bear. <laughs> that's the name I've given it. Uh, it is uh, a camembert with uh, shaved truffles through it. So uh, that should be very interesting as well. So that is all the cheese stuff announcements. But yeah, don't forget, an hour earlier than the live stream today, next week, 12 hours of cheese. I don't know if you'll all be able to stay awake for it, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to jump back in and out of it um, as you see fit. Um, okay. Whew. Now I've got all that off my chest. It's time uh, for some g'days, and we haven't done that yet. So g'day to first one when the stream went live was George. G'day, George, Robert, Herb. We got Fun Pants 94, Lord Slade, I think. Uh, we got James. G'day, James. Charlie, lovely to see you, mate. Min, g'day, Min. Kevin, hello, Kevin. Shocked Kitten, hello. How are you, Shocked Kitten? Three Voyages Homestead, love to see you. Um, Kim's there, of course. She's moderating the YouTube side of things. Um, uh, Chris. Uh, g'day, Chris. Um, who we got? Sylvia. We got Sylvia. James. I don't know if he's James. There we are. Uh, Aaron. We've got Jim Jackson. Lovely to see you, mate. And thanks for the support as always. Um, we've got Jason. G'day, Jason and Manuel and Rodney. Lovely to see you, Rodney. Uh, and another, another Jason, another same Jason. All right, fantastic. So let's see what questions we can dig up. I'm sure there are some somewhere. All righty. Um, okay, first question is from James says, 
Uh, I enjoy Gavin's throne of cheese. Throne. Uh, um, uh, but often find myself thinking that that curly little horn may also appear to be a horn. What horn? I'm not sure what he's talking about. Kim, could you comment on a possibly devilishly size of the G man? No, no, I'm all angel, mate. All angel. All righty. Um, this is a funny question. This is from Robert. It says, what is your favourite G'day curd nerds from the intro? I like the third one, but my wife likes the last one. I didn't know people had a preference. Uh, but, yeah, it's just my catchphrase. But, yeah, thanks, Robert. That's interesting. Sylvia says, uh, hi, Gavin. My double brie turned out super salty. Where did I go wrong? Uh, two things that could have gone wrong, and I've experienced this but myself before. Uh, make sure your brine's only at about 18%. So follow the brine recipe. And if, Kim, you can find the uh, the video for the brine, you pop the link up, please, and that'll go onto YouTube for us. Um, so how to make brine, I think it is. Uh, so stick to that recipe. Don't add any more salt because you can actually saturate it further. Uh, the saturation for normal for most brines are about 18%. So you don't really want to go much higher than that. Also, uh, time is the biggest factor. So the longer you leave the cheese in the brine, the more salt, more calcium chloride, sorry, sodium chloride it absorbs. So uh, you probably left them in there too long. The smaller they are, the less time they need. I find that the small ones that are in that camembert mould, the 10 centimetre mould, uh, only need between two to two to four hours. Depends on the density of the cheese, how heavy it is as well, how compact. If it's a fairly light cheese, two hours. If it's a little bit heavier in that mould, four hours. If you've got a bigger brie, you know, this big, and you've managed to get yourself a 20 centimetre mould, then you will find you'll need at least six six hours to brine that. If you brine any longer than that, possibly you could brine it a bit shorter, depends on how much salt you really want it to absorb. But it's all about the weight of the cheese and how dense it is. Um, so hopefully that points you in the right direction. Um, Three Voyages Homestead said, whatever happened to your Manchego taste test? Good question. Uh, that was back in the day when I was on the YouTube channel. And it wasn't a serious venture for me. So I didn't do taste test videos back then. I didn't know what people wanted. Uh, I, uh, I since, obviously, have reached out to my community via live streams and stuff like that um, and found out what they wanted. And, of course, they wanted the taste test video. Uh, a lot of them wanted the taste test video incorporated with the making video, which is very difficult because, as you know, cheese takes a long time to mature. So I've opted to definitely film taste test videos for all of the ones since about 2018. Uh, all have a taste test video and uh, not too many issues. And, and most and where it goes bad, obviously, I tell people. Um, and uh, go back and try and amend the original video. But, yeah, Manchego never got a taste test. It's a very strong cheese uh, if you make it with cow's milk and the recipe that I use. If you make it with sheep's milk, it's strong, but not as strong as the cow's milk version for some reason. Could be the addition of the lipase, I would say. Okay. Um, Aaron says... Um, Hello from terribly hot Northern California in the US. My goats and I are melting. Yes, I've heard about the heat waves all up the west coast of um, uh, North America. It's a bit of a shocker, a bit like the heat waves we had uh, not last year, but the year before here in Australia. Just crazy. Okay. Um, Fun Pants 94 says, what would you recommend as a good starter hard cheese? Let me think. So um, as opposed to a fresh cheese, so a good starter cheese, I always point towards Kefili is a great starter cheese, hard cheese. Uh, yes, you will need a cheese fridge or a cheese cave for Kefili, but it only takes 
three weeks to mature. So you can you can have a really nice cheese at three weeks, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, another good one, actually, without a cheese fridge is Bel Paese. Uh, and there is a video on Bel Paese and Camembert, uh, not Camembert, and Caffili, um in the link. So, Kim, if you can pop in the link for uh, Bel Paese, but that's actually going to feature next week on the um, 12 Hours of Cheese. So, but Bel Paese is a, a beautifully delicious, simple cheese to make, and you mature it in your cheese fridge. Um, Herb's got a statement. He says 12 hours of uh, la cheese. It kind of sounds like car races. Yeah, it does a bit, a bit like Le Mans, but yeah, nearly. Um, uh, Jim's got a statement about the 12 hour marathon. It says, Greetings, Gavin Webber. Always a pleasure to catch the king queen of the curd herd. Looking forward to the 12 hour marathon. Hope you can stay awake that long, Jim. Um, uh, from what I remember, it starts. Early in the afternoon in, I know there's like four time zones in the US and four or five in Canada. Um, and uh, I think the last session's like three in the morning or something. But yeah, I think a lot of people will be there. Plus, you've got to remember that people from the UK and Europe, which uh, I think we've got some in the chat today, um, will get the tail end of that and that'll be their morning. So yeah. It's it's it, very difficult to do unless I, you know, stay up all night myself. So difficult to do. But, yeah, thanks, mate. Um, statement from Jason says, wow, Limburger, I was at school in grade six, or oh, sixth grade, a kid, fellow student, was from Wisconsin. He bought a Limburger loaf in and cleared out the entire cafeteria in under a minute. Yes, it's it's a stinky cheese and absolutely delicious. Um, great, great little story. Thanks, Jason. Uh, next question is from Manuel and says, is the culture affected when we add a natto and calcium chloride? Uh, no, it's not, mate. Um, the starter culture doesn't get affected by the calcium chloride. The calcium chloride, uh, it's not chlorine, it's chloride, which is a different molecule. Um, so, the milk extracts, so the, the rennet uses some of the calcium in the calcium chloride to strengthen the, um, the casein bond when it sets the curd. So it takes part of that. Uh, the anato is an inert colorant. So when you get yellow cheese all the way up to, say, red cheese like Red Leicester, um, you, uh, you, it, that's from the addition of, of anato. So. All righty. Uh, so, that, no, they don't affect the culture, starter culture, and they don't affect the milk in any way. Well, they the calcium chloride fortifies the milk, makes it set a better curd. Um, Aaron says, uh, just had an idea. Could one do a drunken goat like uh, from Agio Ubracchio, but with goat's milk and use beer? Uh, I make cheese, I make beer. I'd love to combine the two. Any thoughts? Yeah, definitely. Um, you can definitely do that, Erin. There's no drama using any of the recipes that I show with goat's milk. You just need to use a little bit more, uh, definitely need to use calcium chloride. You probably got that from experience anyway, but you need to add a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit more rennet, probably between 10 to 25%, uh, from the recipes that I make with cow's milk. Unless, of course, I've specifically stated I'm using goat's milk in the recipe. But, yeah, and, and the beer, if you have a look at um, uh, the stout cheddar that I made uh, or even the uh, mustard and dark ale cheese, definitely you could use goat's milk with both of those recipes. Uh, and if, Kim, could you throw up the um, stout cheddar uh, video link for um, for Erin, please? Okay. Um, uh, James say, uh, Jason says, no penicillium. I think he's talking about the white Stilton. Uh, I may actually be able to try it. Woohoo. Nice. Um, uh, John says, uh, how do you store your bacterial culture? Uh, good question, John. This comes up often, uh, and I've got a prop. So, 
these little sterile jars that you take your sample to the pathologist, um, these are perfect because they're airtight and moisture tight. Um, and they've got a great little seal. So what I do, we actually ship these with all the starter cultures that come in sachets that you can't reseal. So store the store your starter cultures, pour them into something like this. If you buy from us, we, we provide these. Um, but if you haven't, get your hands on some. Go to the local pharmacy, grab a couple of these. Pour the contents of your packet, your bacterial starter cultures and moulds, uh, separately, of course, and label them all. There's a little label on the front, so that kind of helps. And store them in the freezer. Uh, so screw it on as tight as you can without breaking it. Store them in the freezer. They last a very, very long time. As long as they're still powdery and free-flowing, then you know the bacterial culture is okay. So you won't have any issues. So that's how I store them in a little sterile container. Great question. Thank you, John. Um, Kevin says, uh, for truffle cheese using dried truffles, should we reconstitute in warm water or a bit of milk or just use them dry? I think I'd use them dry, um, Kevin. Um, I used them fresh. I grated them fresh from a fresh truffle. So that's the only experience I've got with truffles. I've still got one truffle left. So I'm thinking about another cheese to make with the truffle that I've got left. Um, so any suggestions in the chat would be most welcome. If anybody knows of a truffle cheese other than uh, a camembert with truffles, which I've seen, or truffle brie, same sort of thing. Um, if you've seen any other cheeses that specifically have truffles through them or would lend themselves to be uh, truffleated, that would be fantastic. So just let us know. Okay. Um, Sylvia says, where can I get five kilo hoops? Uh, so the big baskets, I don't have any personally. Well, I've got one. It's a three kilo hoop. And I got that from Louder in the Netherlands and they sent that to me as part of a promotion. Um, however, I, I'm not sure where you are, Sylvia, um, but there are quite a, a lot of online cheese making supplies these days. And we don't stock anything that big in our shop because we kind of cater for the home cheese maker um, who tend to make smaller batches of cheese. But uh, a five kilo hoop, whew, that's massive. Um, some of the bigger, more well-known um, cheese making suppliers probably will be able to accommodate you. Um, drop me an email if you can. Just go to the About tab of the channel and uh, I'll find out where you are, Sylvia, and we will... Um, See if we can find something for you. Okay. Um, Charlie says, Gavin, are you familiar with those supermarket little goats cheese logs? And do you have a recipe? Uh, I think you're talking about Meredith Dairy, Charlie. Uh, and, yeah, basically that's uh, Sherv. So, yes, I do have a recipe for that. Um, Kim, can you put the recipe link up, please, for... Uh, Sherv uh, and uh, Charlie, all you do is hang the, uh, instead of it being creamy and soft, then just hang it longer um, and uh, in the in the bag and then you should be able to form logs out of them and the flavour is amazing and you can put all sorts of herbs and stuff on the outside and paprika and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, try that. Okay, Rodney says... Uh, without much more information, why does my cheddar cheese not taste cheddar? Good question, Rodney. Why does it not taste like cheddar? Not having any other information, it would be very, very difficult to diagnose. Usually it's uh, incorrect starter cultures um, because, you know, cheddar needs a mesophilic starter culture to make it taste cheddary. I find that the best starter culture to use for the cheddar styles of cheese that I've been using is um, MA 4000 series by Denisco. Um, it's called Choose It. Uh, so MA 4000, it can be 4001, 4002, 4003. Uh, all those variants are for phage control, which means that um, uh, that keeps the... the, the <sighs> phage control, I, I won't even explain it. It's about... Um, 
making sure that the culture is viable in your environment because you, commercial cheesemakers use a lot of um, sanitizer to kill off everything and sometimes it kills off the good bacteria too. Anyway, uh, besides that, uh, yeah, MA4000 is a great uh, starter culture for cheddar and it could be the milk too. It could be lots of things. Um, okay, um, three voyages homestead says is it true that you can only make whey ricotta out of sweet whey indeed it is true uh if you try and make whey ricotta out of uh any lactic set cheese uh then or um or acid set cheese you have no luck whatsoever you need to use sweet whey sweet whey is basically whey that is left over from a cheese that has been coagulated with rennet. You can tell the difference usually. The different main difference is that sweet whey is usually cloudy um, and it's not um, transparent like uh, uh, whey left over from, say, making yogurt or even making, which is an acid set cheese. Well, it's a yogurt, but yeah, technically a cheese. Um, and uh, and um, acid set cheeses like say quick mozzarella, the whey is always um, uh, transparent as well. The whey must be cloudy. That's it's sweet whey used. So yes, definitely that is a true statement. Then you can only make whey ricotta from sweet whey. That's my experience anyway. Um. Uh, Uh, Kevin also says, uh, depends on which salt you use. One cup of fine salt is way more salt than one cup of coarse salt uh, regarding the brie. Yeah, indeed. Uh, that's why in the brine recipe, um, Kevin, I specify the weight, the weight of the salt. So you can use coarse, fine, flaky, sea salt, kosher salt. As long as the weight is correct, or the weight of the salt, then you're right to go. Okay. Um, uh, question from the international capitalist Russian bot. Uh, can you make cheese with tea? I actually have seen cheese with tea. Um, uh, it's very tart. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you could. You could soak the curds in a strong tea um, and then press them and, yeah, you get a little bit of tea flavour. Anyway. Uh, let me just have a sip. I'm getting a little bit hoarse. Jason says, I love the taste test videos. You describe it all very well. Your knowledge of the cultures and flavours, as well as the histories behind the cheese, is unparalleled. And yes, California Bay Area, San Francisco, was 100 Fahrenheit. And that's a normal summer's day here in Australia. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, it has been hot over there for those who aren't used to it. All right, um, Lord Slade says, if you are making your first cheese, what style? Uh, I would fresh cheese, definitely. Make a fresh cheese. Um, uh, probably the simplest one is not ricotta. It's paneer. Paneer is fairly fail safe. Try that, Indian cottage cheese. If you want to add some salt to it, add some salt. It tastes very nice. It's a great little snack. Great in any sort of Indian or um, South Asian cuisine, cuisines. Um, delicious. Um, that's the cheese I would start with. And that's the cheese I always taught in my cheat when I had a cheese making class, a physical one. Uh, that was the first cheese that I taught people because it was so easy and it was fail safe. All righty, we've got gallery time. <laughs> I'm excited. We got some stuff for the gallery. Where are we? Gallery. Rightio, let me just share my screen. And we will start the gallery. And I tried to, I can't remember uh, if I mentioned this before, but um, there was a TV show a long time ago in the UK called Vision On. We used to get it here in Australia. It starred Tony Hart, who was a great artist. And there was a tune. Um, and uh, I tried, I, I was going to use the tune because Kim loves it. It's, it's just the gallery reminds her of that TV show when she was a kid. And he used to show pictures that kids had sent in, paintings. Anyway, 
apparently it's uh, it gave me a copyright strike when I uploaded a test video to YouTube. So uh, I won't be using the music, but uh, just hum it to yourselves if you know it. Anyway, first um, uh, first cheese is from Cup of Tea Love. And uh, Cup of Tea Love, we don't have the person's first name. And uh, I'll just read out what um, they sent. So it says, my first holy cheese, Yalsberg. So much fun watching it puff up, and the end result is delightful and delicious. I suspect those big uh, cavernous cracks in amongst the holes aren't too desirable. I don't have a cheese press yet working on it, so perhaps uh, it's because I couldn't quite get the weight on it that it needed. Uh, so it was a bit loose uh, in there when it started expanding. P.S. I'll put you out of my your misery and confirm that I am, in fact, a she. So Cup of Tea Love is Mrs. Cup of Tea Love, or Miss Cup of Tea Love. Thank you very much for your photo, that Yalesburg. So the little fishes in it is actually known as late blowing, um, and it's caused by butyric acid, which is present in the milk if the cow uh, has consumed silage, which is a fermented grass that farmers usually feed their cows in wintertime. The only way to get rid of butyric acid uh, or late blown cheese is to add a stuff called uh, lysolac or uh, lysime is the enzyme. It's made from uh, white e uh, egg whites um, and it's very difficult to get hold of in, uh, in non-commercial quantities. You only need to put in uh, one sixty-fourth of a teaspoon in 10 litres of milk to stop this late blowing. I've been trying to get my hands on this stuff and I just can't get it. All right. Thank you, cup of tea, love. So the next one is from David Orson. Uh, does David have a little... No, he's got nothing to say. Right. So David is the guy that sent me the, uh, the compound lever cheese press <clears throat> that we saw in the video last week. Uh, he makes a wicked camembert. And as you can see there, it is lovely and oozy around the outside. Perfect looking camembert. Uh, absolutely delicious. And apparently his wife tells him that's what he can make. <laughs> um, but you don't need a cheese press for that. But anyway, so this is uh, David's cheese fridge. Very nice. And the first thing I noticed was that it was in a shower cubicle. So he must have a spare shower in his house. Uh, and uh, he's put his cheese fridge in there. And he's storing all his cheese gear in there. So, yep, don't need a shower in that house, but you've got your cheese fridge in there. That's what's most important, I think. So well done, David. Thank you very much for seeing those photos in. Uh, and thank you so much once again for the cheese press. I've just got to glue the upright struts in struts with some uh, these these ones here, these bits, that one and that one. I've got to glue mine in so that the pressure doesn't make them pop out. Uh, and I'll be featuring that in a video very soon. All righty. Um, these uh, uh, Belper cannoli, I think that's how you say it, I've uh, been told that it's pretty correct. Um, so Belper cannoli, uh, little pepper ones. Um, so Julia says, <coughs> excuse me, um, hi, Gavin. I made some kefili and belpa cannoli, both your recipes. I aged the kefili for three weeks. We'll get to that in a minute. It tastes good, but needed a longer aging time as New Zealand South struggle and keep the cheese fridge above eight degrees Celsius. However, in the tipple, uh, with a tipple of Malbro Pinot Noir, it went down a treat. We'll see that in a sec. The belpa cannoli, I have been making this week however the smell of garlic through the house has been unbearable i need to drain the cream cheese for an extra day or so as it wasn't firm enough when i added the garlic and the salt taste of the cream cheese and garlic was amazing i can't wait to try the end result um okay so that's the belper cannoli and they're drying now there's the kefili with the lovely um new zealand pinot noir and some um uh, some crackers. They're unusual looking crackers. I have never seen those before, but they look lovely. Um, and the kefili looks about the right consistency indeed. Uh, and she used, this, this is the thing. So I use these mesh bags to cover the cheese when I am drying it. My seven litre Sistema container fits perfectly inside the large bag. 
Um, I get these bags off AliExpress. Uh, thank you for your wonderful uh, inspiration, Julia Shaw, New Zealand. Thank you, Julia. Um, yeah, so those bags look perfect for air drying. I personally use a little umbrella, just a food umbrella, keeps the bugs off um, and stops uh, any uh, potential kasu mazu from growing. <laughs> we all know about that. That's an in cheese joke. Uh, we've got a super chat, and I'll get to that after the gallery. Thank you very much, whoever sent that through. Uh, but we will get to that in a minute. So the next cheese uh, is from, who's this from? Uh, Seth, and Seth's got a bit of a note here. Um, he's got a bloomy goat blue, which is developing wonderfully. Tried to stretch it over three cheeses for gift purposes, and they turned out a bit smaller than I would have liked. Next time I'll use more milk. So a little bit flat, but that's okay. I think they'll turn out all right. Once you get a full um, white coverage, I think the cheese will turn out amazing. It looks great. Well done, Seth. Uh, and this is uh, a picture of Seth's Blue Gouda, or Gouda, uh, using 3.5 gallons of milk. So that's massive. Uh, there are only traces of the Penicillium Rogue 40 colouring visible in the cheese, but the cheese is delicious at only three months with a beautiful creamy texture and an undertone of blue flavour. That's amazing. Well done, Seth. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sending it in. And that, my friends, is the end of the gallery. What happens when I close that? There we go. It all comes back. So um, how do you send me pictures for the gallery? Because I'm going to need lots of pictures. I'm going to have a few galleries next week during the 12 hours of cheese. And I would love to show your cheeses that you've made uh, in the gallery. All right. So how do you do it? Let me just bring up another window. <laughs> So many windows today. Let's screen share that. Uh, there we are. So uh, share. So this is my YouTube channel, not logged in. Uh, so this is in incognito. So go to Gavin Weber, the YouTube channel that you're on. Go to the About tab just here. Uh, click on that. And down here, you'll see details for business inquiries. Uh, if you're not signed in, you'll need to sign in to see the email address. Uh, and when you do, uh, it will ask you to sign into Google and do a I'm not a robot thing, but that the email address will be possible, uh, visible, it's possible. Please, please send me the photos to that email address only uh, because that's the only one I look at. I've got lots of email addresses. Please use that one uh, and uh, everything will be perfect. Okay, so... Thank you so much to everybody who sent in their photos this week. Uh, they were some amazing cheeses, as always. All right. Um, the Super Chat. Let's get to that. This is from uh, Jay. And Jay says, is there a cheese you would describe as funky tasting? Love the videos. Oh, indeed. One, one comes to mind straight away. Uh, Shropshire Blue. Or oh, Shropshire, yeah. The Shropshire Blue is one of the funkiest cheeses that I've ever tasted. It is a very strong Penicillium Roque 40 cheese, so blue cheese. It's the kind of blue cheese that makes your tongue tingle at the back. It's, that's how strong this cheese is. Um, so that was the first one that instantly shot to mind. The other one, oh, let me think. What was the other stinkiest one? wasn't Limburger, it wasn't, uh, Brick was really stinky. And so was um, uh, Port Salou was another washed uh, Rhine cheese that were really stinky as well. But yeah, the, the one that sticks in my mind was Shropshire Blue. And if Kim, if you can pop up the link to Shropshire Blue, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for the question, Jay. And for the $10 Super Chat, appreciate it. And you got the curd light flashing. All righty. Um, let me go back and see if we have some more questions way back then. I do. There's lots of them. Um, uh, Jim, no, here we are. Patricia. Let me have a look. Sorry for the silence. I shouldn't be silent. I should just keep talking. 
Um, Karen says, um, Gavin, I hope to catch the beginning and end of your 12 hours. So, Tim, uh, in the UK. Okay, yeah, so that'll be great, Karen. Um, and Aaron says um, it'll be, well, it's 3.17 Pacific time. An hour earlier will be 2 p.m. So at 11 a.m. Eastern time, just for, yep, okay, you should be able to see it all, Aaron. That's fantastic. Okay. Um, a question from uh, Wine, Wine Marrick. Um, oh, wine maker Rick. Sorry, couldn't read that. It was all together. Uh, never in your videos do you check pH. How important is it in cheese packing, making? Um, it's important when it needs to be important. Uh, if you want to replicate the cheese same time over and over and over again, then the pH is important, and you should write that down on your cheese making page or sheet or whatever you're going to use, and me measure the pH at a couple of stages. So first stage is uh, after you've cultured the cheese. Second, the third stage, sorry, second stage is after you've cut the curd. Next stage is after you mould the cheese. Um, so unfortunately, the test strips that I use uh, for when I make pasta filata cheeses probably won't cut the mustard with that. So you'll need a proper pH cheese making probe. There is actually a good one from Hannah. Um, which is a, um, a instrument instrument making company, um, and they do these pH testers, and they're pretty good. So you can use them. I don't use them very often, only when I need to. Um, so yeah, uh, that's my opinion on that. I suppose. Um, let's go down. Uh, Uh, sorry, uh, here we go. So Sylvia made uh, Limburger last week. Uh, I've been turning them daily and noticed little curd balls come off when I touch it. Ooh, is this normal? Red smear hasn't formed yet. What can I expect? When can I expect to see that? Little curd balls shouldn't be coming off the cheese when you touch it. Um, sounds like your curds was too dry when you put it into the basket and just pressed it with the... Um, uh, the light pressing that it has. It should be really, really moist, the curds. They should have totally knitted together into one single cheese. Sounds like a bit of an issue. The red smear takes about 21 days. You just can see it at about 14 days. Um, so about 21 days, uh, you'll see the red smear. It takes a while to grow. So hope that all helps. Um, Jason says a good idea for the panko crusted deep fried truffles. Oh, goodness me. Um, sounds a bit strong. Uh, Patricia says there is a special basket used in Malta to make um, a Jebnet uh, cheeselets. Any chance of Little Green Workshops would stock them? Funny you should say that, Patricia. I actually have 60 of the little baskets that I'm going to put up online this afternoon. Uh, so they will be there in the cheese basket section. There's a funny name for them. And Charlie, if you're in the chat, can you just pop in the name of what the basket's called in Malta? Uh, that would be great. And uh, yes, and I'll put the official name on the product page. Uh, but yeah, there is a little basket. I managed to get my hands on some. They are very reasonably priced. So uh, watch out for them, Patricia. Uh, they will be soon. And uh, I'll even send you an email with the link to the cheese baskets. Thank you for um, prompting me on that. I've had them for about a week and just haven't done anything with them. Uh, Jim's got a suggestion. He says, um, I think that cheddar sprinkled with ground truffle just before pressing would be rather tasty. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I think that um, the best style of cheddar to use for that, Jim, probably would be the stir curd. Uh, it'd be a lot easier to incorpor incorporate the truffle into it with uh, the traditional cheddar because it's got those fingers of curds might be difficult to integrate into the cheese. Um, so, yeah, good stirred curd cheddar uh, would be the best for that. And, yeah, I think that would be perfect. Uh, Kevin says, Louder does sell directly to the public and ships worldwide now. Oh, that's fantastic news. See, they do pretty good in moles, but they are 
uh, very expensive, very expensive molds, but they will last you a lifetime. And you don't need to use a cheesecloth and you don't even need to flip the cheese uh, when you're pressing it. You just press it and it all works and you vary the, the pressure um, as you press the cheese as you go along. All righty. Um, uh, Jim says, uh, I, I oh know, Jason says, Jim, I agree. Sounds amazing. Truffles as a fungus, can they be used as the culture ex exclusively instead of having bacteria or mold? I don't think it, it would work. They're not a lactic bacteria. They won't eat the lactose. Uh, Jason. <clears throat> Toby and Eric, Erica, that rings a bell. Uh, sorry for being late. Um, good to see everybody. Thank you, Toby, for turning up. Um, uh, Kurdish Potato says, can you use solid vegetable oil instead of coconut oil to coat the cheddar cheese? Uh, I found that the coconut oil actually uh, promoted a little bit of mould growth, so I wouldn't use that again. I would actually use um, lard like they do in the UK when they cloth bound a cheddar. So that's, uh, for the uninitiated, that's pig fat. Uh, so, yeah, lard for uh, your cheddar coating, and that seems to be the best. Um, okay. Um, Sylvie's got a suggestion. Uh, Monterey Jack, oh, a truffle cheddar. Yep, or oh, I think that was. Nice. Yeah, good suggestions. Oh, here's something. John says, um, have you ever tried or considered making red Windsor cheese? It's basically cheddar with veins marbling of port. Uh, so that's port wine uh, th running through it. Funny you should say that. Kim has been on my back lately. Not that she does, but, you know, she's been urging me to make a red Windsor cheese. Uh, and yes, I'm going to grab myself some vintage port from the uh, the local wine shop. Um, they're called Bottleos here. <laughs> Funny, the different names in every state of Australia. But yeah, um, Kim calls them an off license. So yeah, I will be getting myself some port, uh, a nice strong one, and um, yeah, we will uh, we'll try and make some Red Windsor cheese. So yeah, that is a cheese that will be coming up soon. Red Wind Windsor. It's got a D in it. All right, there we go. I put a reminder down. Thank you very much, John, for that reminder. <clears throat> um, uh, Jason says, phage control is microbiologists speak for how to care for your cultures, indeed. Um uh, John says, uh, also a Bordeaux wine instead of port, apparently. <clears throat> I find that um, Bordeaux wouldn't be sweet enough, probably, and not strong enough. Um, but, yeah, I do have a cheese already, a cheese recipe with red wine, uh, which is called Fromaggio or Bracchio. So go and check that out. It means drunken cow in Italian. Um, Judy says, a truffle manchego. I might have another run at that, actually, seeing there's no taste test. And the manchego video is very old. Um, it will be a manchego style because I'm not using goat, uh, sheep's milk. Uh, truffle manchego. I think those flavours would knit very well. So I put that down as a suggestion. Thank you very much, Judy. Um... Uh, Three Voyages Home says, I just want to say I made your Persian feta and, oh, man, was that good. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's 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 a great little recipe and it tastes amazing. Um, a gate kitten? Gate kitten. Is there any Dutch cheese you prefer to eat? Well, of course, I like Edam. I like Gehalda. I like um, Leodama. I don't think that's how you say it, but it's a very nice uh, holy cheese from the Netherlands. Uh, I also like Leiden or Kaminekas. I like those cheeses and I've made them all. Uh, but yeah, all very lovely cheeses from the Netherlands. And uh, I've actually even been to a cheese factory in the Netherlands back in um, 1987 when I did a Kentucky tour of Europe and or some of Europe anyway uh, as it was back then and um, yeah we went to a I think it was an Edom factory very nice okay um, 
Yeah, let me have a look. Um, 56 Parkies says, have you ever made Reblochon cheese before? I can't find it here. So would love to make some if there's a recipe out there. I have a recipe. I've never made it. Let's. I did try once, but it was a dismal fa failure. So I'm going to have to remember what mistakes I made. Uh, but it is a tasty little cheese. All right. Um, uh, Manel says, what is the flocculation factor for queso fresco? Uh, I would say, let me think, Need. I think it's about an hour, I think. Uh, so it would be about 3.5 to 4, Manel, is the flocculation factor for queso fresco. All righty. Um, uh, here we go. Uh, so John says, the piece we're talking about, remember I was talking about Vision Line at the start of the gallery, it's called uh, Left Bank 2, and you can play it along yourself. It is on YouTube. That's where I got a copy of it, uh, but it, there is a copyright strike. When you try and upload it yourself, it is claimed by the record company, even though that the recording was back in 1964. Okay. Um, Here's a, a funny question. Um, uh, uh, Titus, Titus says, uh, what is a cheese diet? I don't know if it's a joke, but, yeah, a cheese diet is... Um, I love... I'd survive on one. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, let me have a look. Um, question from Jason or statement. The only cheese I've ever made was something basic. Milk and a hot, bought to heat, add lemon juice, stir, separate, squeeze and serve. But, um, that and then rosemary sprigs in the middle before you press. So that's basically a paneer Um or paneer style, Jason, but it's a, a lovely little cheese. Nothing wrong with that. Um, all right, so we've got lots of comments about the... Oh, here's a good one. I like this one. Uh, Key West Alert says, My cheese, chowder, and cheddar smells like foot fungus. What do I do? Well, funny you should say that. Foot fungus is known as Brevibacteria linens. It is the same fungus... Uh, that is between our toes. It's actually a bacteria, not a fungus. Now, ah, that's what gives you red mold or washed rind cheeses. Uh, so you have an infection somewhere in your cheese cave, probably, of Brevi bacteria linens. Um, the best way to get rid of it is to make sure that your cheese is fairly dry. Uh, it loves moisture. It loves a good brine as well. So if you're washing it off with brine, uh, it's only going to promote it and make it go all over the cheese. However, if you add a little bit of vinegar into your brine wash, uh, it will help uh, kill off the brevibacterial linens. So hopefully that helps. All righty. Um, uh, <laughs> Jason says David knows his priorities about his cheese cave in his, um, <laughs> in his shower. Yeah, indeed. All right. Um, question from FunPants94. How do you maintain the humidity in your current cave? Uh, good question. So what I do is I use ripening boxes. I use ripening boxes, red ones. You would have seen those in the videos. And that is where I put the cheeses and I put a little, um, uh, I put a moist piece of paper towel or um, uh, cloth in the bottom underneath the mat. And that maintains humidity about 80, 85%, uh, which is pretty good for most cheeses anyway. Uh, if you want to lower the humidity, you take the paper towel out and just let any whey that's accumulated in the bottom, it makes it very, very humid inside. Uh, and you get very little cracking. So that's good. All righty. Um, uh, Kismet says, I have a question to ask. What's the best place to ask it? In the chat is the best place to ask it. Um all right. Why? Oh, here's a good question. What is a good, mild, creamy blue? Oh, there's a couple uh, that I've made, uh, Margaret. So uh, Castle Blue is a nice creamy blue. Uh, there's another one called Buttermilk Blue. Uh, I thought it was going to be a disaster, but it turned out to be an amazingly creamy blue cheese. 
very mild in flavour, but the blue flavour's there. So fantastic. So give that a go. Uh, Kim, if you've got the links for Buttermilk Blue, uh, please pop that up in the link for YouTube, please, darling. All righty. Um, let's have a look. Julia says, I slept in again. You missed the gallery, Julia. You were in it. Um, hi, everybody from New Zealand. Um, but, yeah, uh, go back and have a look at the replay later, Julia. Um, great you, great cheeses. That's all I can say. Um, tips. Uh, this is from Greenleaf Kitchen. Tips for mechanical holes in my Budokaze cheese. Thank you. Warm curd check. I use a twist tighten press. Uh, Budokaze tends to suffer from late blown as well sometimes. Um, I find that the mechanical holes, you can only do it by pressing pressing harder. Um, but if it's late blown, nothing you can do except add lysolac uh, to get rid of any fissures. If you've got cracks, big cracks through it, then that's a sign of late blown. If it's just little holes dotted through it, that's just where it hasn't been pressed heavy enough. So just press heavier. All righty. Um, and here's a question from Marissa. Says, Adrian Saffa here living in Sydney. So you're not Marissa? Um, where in SA are you from? Uh, South Australia, SA? I am from South Australia originally. I don't know. You might, you might have noticed from my accent. Uh, we have different accents here in Australia. Very hard to pick. Kim thinks she knows how to pick them. But yes, I'm originally from Loxton. That's where I was born in South Australia on the River Murray. Um, my first cheese was Bell Paese. It was amazing. That's fantastic. Um, uh, I, what's this? Uh, I really like, uh, this is from Ali's, says, I really like goat's cheese. Uh, should it be a similar process to cow's milk? Uh, yes, add a little bit more in it. All righty, I've just noticed the time. We've got two minutes to the premiere, so I'm going to have to cut it off. Kim is going to give me the wind-up. I'm sorry I couldn't get to everybody's questions, but that's just the nature of it all. Um, so thank you very much. Um, if you are in Australia and a few other countries, we do ship cheese-making supplies. So you can get your supplies at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Um, also, if you want to buy some merch, Turn that off. If you want to buy some merch, pop up, have a look at the um, on YouTube. Have a look at the YouTube merch shelf, uh, or go to the channel and there's a store tab, and you can see all the stuff that we sell there. And you get all the cool T-shirts and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, curd nerds, I'm very excited. We've got to, the premiere will start very soon, so we'll go over to that and I'll end the stream. But thanks once again for all your questions. Without it, there wouldn't be a show. And I hope to see you on the 12 Hours of Cheese next Sunday or Saturday, wherever you may be. Well, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds, and I'll see you next time.